All right, so um, we're trying out a um, some new software here. Um, this is called uh, OctaveOnline.net. So it's Octave-Online.net, and I'll send you the link to this. Um, what you're going to want to do is um, actually give an enrollment statement here, but um, so that we can uh, share files. But before we get into anything like that, I just wanted to show you some real simple computations with this program. Uh, we're going to be looking at the uh, computer simulation of the population model that we were working with before. Okay, so um, let's think about how this is going to work. Um, we said that first we want a vector of n elements, so let's go ahead and just say, oh, let's just say we're going to start with 50. And so we have a vector that's 1 by 50, and I want random numbers to be in that, so I'm going to uh, use the command rand and just to see what that is I'll go ahead and type in help rand and so if you go up here let's see what the help file says uh, rand is a built-in function from this thing and if you use rand with an M and an N in it it'll be a vector or a matrix with random elements and here's the key part um, it's the random elements are going to be uniformly distributed Let's see if I can spit that out. Uniformly distributed on the interval from 0 to 1. That's the key piece there, right? So <clears throat> um, what we were saying before in the other video is we needed that. Um, by the way, CLC will clear the screen. And so now if I, let's let uh, C be equal to our random vector, 150. And I won't put a semicolon on here. If I put a semicolon on it, um, uh, represses or suppresses, I should say, <laughs> the output doesn't repress. Um, here's the values here between 0 and 1. Uh, we don't really need to see those. And so what I could say instead, by the way, the up arrow key is what I just hit, and I get the same command. If I use a semicolon here, uh, that suppresses the output, so I don't see that all that crap. Okay, good. Now, what did I want to do with that? Let's say C1, I want to round those numbers off, right? And uh, I guess we'll take a look at those just to verify, right, that we're seeing zeros and ones here. And so the ones are going to be representative of our current population. And so what we could say is uh, maybe C2 is the sum of C1, right? So I'm summing the elements of the vector to see what my new population is. And so my new population has a uh, 21 values in it. What do I do now? Well, we want to go ahead and reset our vector. Instead of having 50 elements, we now have 21. Right? And then C1, if I just, uh, whoops, what was C1 again? Let's see here, C1, uh, round C. So I'm rounding those off, right, to get numbers between 0 and 1. I'll suppress the output. And then C2, again, is the sum of C1. So our new population has 9 people in it. Good. And so what do I do now? Well, we can repeat the process again. C equals rand 1 to C2, which is 9. And then C1 is equal to round C. And then C2 is the sum of C1. And now we have six people. And so you can see we can repeat that again. So you're seeing what we're going to be doing in our algorithm, I think. We keep reducing that population. Of course, the question now is, when do we stop? We don't stop yet. In fact, I could put uh, C2 here, right? That would make that easier to do. Of course, I would have to have an initial value for C2 if I did that. And now I'll reset C2. Oops. Is that going to work? Did I mess that up, or did that just happen? <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Are we going to go into an infinite loop? Maybe. That's not so bad since I'm sitting here. Oh, nope. Okay. So now we'll go to C again. 
C1, C2. <laughs> C, C1, C2. There we go. Now we're down to one. And now it's a 50 50 shot, right? C, uh, one, C, two, zero. Okay, now we stop. Very good. All right. So we stop when the population is zero. That's the key. And uh, you can see we're just running this loop. So what I want to do is I want to try to figure out what the what is this loop that we're doing. And I've got this over here in this uh, model already. I can go ahead and see if let's see if we can write it down live. I kind of cheated and put another version over there. So uh, by the way, this is if you go to files, you can open or create an empty file, and the default name is my script. Okay, and so uh, here we'll try to write down some of the commands. This is called a script file, and it's just typing in the commands that you would um, uh, type in live over on this side of the equation, or over on this side. So let's see how we started. Let's first of all, um, let's define what our value of the current population is. So over here, that was C2 that we were using, right? So let's go ahead and set C2. Set C2 is um, 50. And just as a note, uh, since it doesn't make any sense, C2 <laughs> is the current population. It's always good to have a little... Well, some people would really hate this for my... Well, okay. Uh, the variable name is just irrelevant at this point. <laughs> we can deal with that later. Okay. So now what do I want to do with that? Let's go ahead and just write down our loop before we finish it. We see that I want, I got C equals rand 1 C2. But then in the next line, I'm rounding C off. So let's just go ahead and put that in uh, these two commands together instead of having them separate. Then I don't have to type so much. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to set C2 to be the sum of C1. Right? And now I want to do this over and over again, so I need a loop here. Uh, what's the loop going to depend on? Well, the loop will depend on... Loop depends on the population being greater than zero, right? Um, so I could uh, do... Hmm. What should I do? Uh, I want the population to be greater than zero. Uh, what I should do is I should make sure that I don't have an infinite loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a loop to be a while loop. And it's going to be while the number of iterations, which is my current number of iterations, is less than my maximum number of iterations. I'm going to run this loop. Oops. And so up above here, I'm going to set my number of iterations equals one. That's the first one. And then the maximum number of iterations that I want to go is, let's say, five times the population. Is it should, you know, we should be able to converge before five times the number of population. Very good. OK. What else do I need to know now? I need to loop depending on the population, but I actually use the number of iterations instead. So <laughs> I need to fix that. Uh, there is a reason for that. Uh, that's because this is this is um, like my... Uh, if everything else fails, I need to be able to get out of this loop at some point. So that's why I'm checking that. Okay. So now the question is, uh, if C2 is equal to zero, I want to get out of the loop. And so in that lab, uh, you can just say break. Okay, so this command, I'm going to indent this to just to indicate that that's inside my thing here. I should be indenting all of this. Oops. Oh, my programming teacher would be swearing up a storm. Whoop. <laughs> He is still alive. I made it sound like he was probably dead. You might think that. <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, what am I doing? Okay. 
So if I'm outside of this loop right here, then my population is bigger than zero, and so I can continue. So therefore I will set the number of iterations at this point to be the number of iterations plus one. I will also keep track of my uh, current population. So let's just say the population vector uh, number of iterations oops, is equal to C2. Let's see. So uh, the only problem with this is that uh, it's going to miss the first one, right? So let's just go ahead and say plus one there. Uh, because the first one should really be the initial population. So I should up here say population, whoops, population one equals the initial population C2. How are we doing here? I think that's it, isn't it? Let's try it. Uh, save. And then you can just hit this little run thing here on the side. Why is that taking so long? Though I think it finished. Let's see, population. Wow. Ah. There. <laughs> what happened? Why didn't it run? C equals round C2. Did I reset C2? I did not. Oh, that's what's the problem is. Okay. Uh, C2. No, I did reset it. It's the sum of C1. Oh, C1's not defined. Well, that's weird. Why didn't it give me an error? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, you know what? It was using a C1 from my old... So, you know what? A couple things happen. First off, I should clear my variables, so I'm not using any old variables. <laughs> and now I think I'm ready. This should actually be a C1 here, or a C. Uh, I guess we're not using C1 anymore, so we'll just keep it as C. Good. Oh, you guys are getting letting me uh, debug my code live. Isn't that fun to watch? Run. Okay, now we'll set the population. I should just go ahead and... There it is. Oh, what the heck is that? <laughs> uh, why did that equal zero, I wonder? Population one is C2. That was correct. And then, oh, I see what I did. Did you catch that? I don't need this because this is already adding one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I think it'll work. Whoop. Population. Do you think it'll work? Undefined. Oh, I have to run my code first. <laughs> now you think it'll work? There it goes. Very good. So now we will say plot population. Good. Then there's your population. In fact, we might put it on the end of this plot population just so you know that it's finished. And now we'll save. And then we can run. Good. And now we can run again and again and again. And so you can kind of see what's happening. There's an interesting curve there, right, that's happening. So the question is, is uh, can we rewrite this computer code now uh, into a mathematical model of our population? This is almost a mathematical model in and of itself. But um, let's see if we can uh, mimic this with a continuous differential equation. And that will be the topic of the Actually, it's be the topic of the next lab. So um, I don't want to give away the answer. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day.